thanks for attending the C portfolio webinar and I'm just going to run through the running order of today. So this overview is just to talk about who's coming up and who's talking in what order. Mm -hmm. So this is me, Mr. Patrick Doyle. Introduction to the webinar will be by Dr. Danielle Le Levild. And that there's the times, the times will probably be longer or shorter, depending. Um, health and society experience will follow uh, Daniela's introduction and the presenter will be Professor Anne Matthews. After Anne, we will have the nursing undergraduate experience with ePortfolios and that will be Dr. Melissa Corberley. After Melissa, we'll have the nursing master's experience and in that, Daniela will introduce the student voice and the student voice today will be Jennifer Doyle and they'll talk about for about 10 minutes. And after that, we'll have a Q&A for 15 or more or less, depending on what you want to do at the end of this. <laughs> OK, so I'll just stop sharing and it's up to Daniela. Um, if I go there. There you yeah, go, Daniela. Thanks very much, thanks very much um, uh, Patrick, there for the introduction. Just wanted to say about the question and answer, uh, question and answer that you've seen like at the end. Yes. So if you, while you're listening to each other's presentations, if you have any questions that are coming up, maybe type them straight away into the chat and then we can go through the questions at the end if that's okay. So if you have okay. anything that comes to you, maybe just type it into the chat and then we have it there yeah. and we can go back to it then later or keep it to the end if you like, whichever one. But I'm just saying there's the option of putting it in the chat uh, box if you want, uh, because if you're like me, where you forget <laughs> what you wanted to ask. So thanks very much again for, to, for um, everybody to come to this um, ePortfolio webinar. And um, really the idea behind this is, um, I suppose, to just share our experiences of uh, working a little bit with this kind of area of ePortfolios for teaching, for learning, for assessment, whichever different ways we're using it. Um, I'm using it for the master's program and we'll talk about that later on together with Jennifer. But uh, I think I was just aware that, um, that we, um, you know, we all use, you know, all the different things and sometimes, you know, we, we don't really know, you know, what, what we are all actually, what, what each other are actually doing. So it was really good opportunity, I thought, to just, you know, put together this webinar and kind of share what's happening in different programs, just a couple of different perspectives. I'm sure it's not everything, but just for anybody else who might be interested just to find out or maybe is interested for their own program to do something or for their module to do something like that. And um, that's at least a little introduction. So it's just really like almost like an informal kind of get together to kind of just share a bit about that. Um, so that's really great. Now, Patrick and myself are also involved in a project together with the TU, the Teaching Enhancement Unit, There's a small bit of funding from the National Forum to kind of, um, I suppose, assist with developing confidence and competence in using ePortfolios. So, you know, I think that's a really good starting point for us as well to kind of just share and see what's actually out there and to maybe, you know, keep um, doing some relation to that. I know Lisa has done lots of webinars over, you know, the last past while. Um, which have been, you know, really well perceived and they, they, they're ongoing. There's probably more to come there as well. So thanks again, everybody, for coming. It's great. Um, and I'm going to just, without further ado, kind of hand over to Anne uh, to share with us the um, Bachelor in Health and Society experience, if you don't mind, Anne. And you're on silent, you're on mute. Of course, I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daniela. And uh, hopefully you can see my screen there. So I'm delighted. I'll have to, I'll stick to 12 minutes. I'm not sure if, if I'm very good at that, but I'll do my best. So I'm representing the BSc in Health and Society within the school. Um, I'm the chairperson of the programme for the last two years. Um, and I've just tried to bring in Loop Reflect as the ePortfolio during that. Um, most of you will know that the degree is a three-year undergraduate degree where we've had 10 intakes so we're having an anniversary this year and it explores health from all different perspectives different disciplines different levels from a cell to the global level 
big focus on research, inquiry and action, very broad uh, ideas about health, social health, societal health, emotional, uh, mental health, physical well-being and physical health, and really trying to challenge some of those inequalities. So uh, some of you will have seen this before, the kind of the way the program is structured. We have health inquiry and action modules. Sorry, these are small boxes. Uh, Bioscience is running through each year, social justice modules, and then on the right, um, more kind of culture and society. Uh, some of those have kind of life course like child and adolescent and then living longer. So I suppose I noticed that, that mine are in the social justice strand, which wasn't deliberate, but over time, that's the way it happened. So my own modules within the health and society degree, I have a module in first year scarcity and health and the students do a video uh, submission as part of that on alternatives to the way we usually think about scarcities. And that comes in through Loop Reflect. And there's a second year module on campaigning for health equity. And the students are submitting their kind of plans for their campaigns and how they've interacted with agencies. And also then the reflection on their, sorry, it's no longer a group campaign just with all of the current circumstances. So it's now an individual campaign. Uh, NS370 is a global health module I teach, but I'm not using Reflect in that. And I reached out to the team just to see who else is using Reflect on the health and society. Uh, Catherine McGonigal and Tracy Harrington are. Uh, but I said I'd just represent us today with a couple of my modules. So the first one is the NS137 video, and we have a core textbook in there. It's, a, it's the limits to scarcity. It's kind of challenging ideas about scarcity. And the authors of the, the book, the editors of the book say that, you know, a lot of the time we're told there is no alternative. So this Tina, there is no alternative. You know, we have to buy water. We have to privatize water, land, uh, there is no alternative. So I asked the students just to think about alternatives. So they create a video, uh, four minutes long, and they submit that into Loop Reflect. Um, and it's very kind of structured video. They focus on one health inequity problem. Uh, they look at the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of most relevance to those, to that problem. Look at the commonly proposed solutions. What do people say would help solve this? And then one other idea they have. And I was working with Emer Nivrodig in the past couple of years from the kind of social innovation, social enterprise uh, point of view on the last, uh, the last aspect of that. So the students create a video and I ask them to then upload that into uh, Loop Reflect. In previous years, I've also asked them to create a resource sheet um, and other artifacts in Loop Reflect related to the video, but I've just kept it to the video uh, this year because I just found the, the, the resource sheet, um, you know, it was kind of halfway between an academic piece and a kind of a record or their script for their video. So I do encourage the students to create a script for their video. Um, there are lots of stages, I suppose, to that. Um, but and the other one is, you know, letting the students know from the beginning about the marking rubric. And I suppose I just wanted to highlight probably that the obviously the content is important. Have they described a problem? Have they shown understanding of the goals, solutions, one solution from themselves? And then 20 uh, percent, if you like, of the 100 percent of the 20% go for the video itself, the pace, creativity. You know, some students have gone, if they're talking about water scarcity or water security, they go, you know, stand by a lake, maybe that's polluted or, you know, to talk about a lack of healthcare resources, people go and stand outside the maternity hospital. Of course, lots of social restrictions recently, but a lot of people very creative there, even if it's just their own backdrop when they're recording their video. So I suppose I try to highlight to the students that, you know, the format here and the, and the pace is, is important as well. Um, you'll see my <laughs> awful example there, a sample I made uh, when we were on campus. Uh, that was uh, one winter's evening. Um, and I just, uh, you know, show them how the kind of pace would work. Um, and here was a really good student uh, last year. I should say I asked permission for all the students to show their work and they were all really delighted. Um, so this was a student who was in first year at the time talking about period poverty for uh, women who are homeless in Dublin. Uh, and this was when we had the resource sheet in and this is her uh, doing her video. So, uh, you know, 
I suppose the content does matter, but the format as well and the pacing and the creativity uh, matters there. Um, just in relation to making videos, I suppose myself and Lisa Donaldson from the TEU, who was mentioned already, uh, work together on making that process as streamlined as possible for the students. So there's a number of different ways of, of recording videos with their phone and where they save them in their Google Drive or uh, onto YouTube, wh whatever method. And once then, it can be added as it can as an external uh, link or through the Google uh, Google uh, Drive onto their portfolio. We just kind of do that with them in the class as well. So there's clarity about that. The next module is campaigning for health equity. And just this time around, as I said, it's an individual uh, campaign where students are, you know, setting out, uh, identify a health inequity, as you can see from the rubric, look at the current campaigns, consult with at least one group uh, campaigning in the area. So uh, a lot of, of students this year have focused on traveller health inequities, uh, you know, short life expectancy, uh, increased uh, infant mortality, for example, or, you know, problems with restricted access to services because of COVID for various groups, people with disabilities, um, people in direct provision, you know, their lack of mental health services. So each student has chosen their own issue, looked at what's happening and consult with one group, which can be a little bit daunting for students. So again, I want to give some marks for them reaching out to do that. Then they set a goal uh, and set their planned activities at that stage kind of write all that part up as a text piece, but then 20 marks again goes for the loop reflect e-portfolio, the format, the style, uh, the addition of um, artifacts into their portfolio. So uh, that's for the 20% for the plan. And later on then there's 50% for the reflection of their campaign, which typically includes more artifacts because at this stage they have, you know, maybe photos of their events in the past. Uh, most of these are virtual now and they you know, I encourage them to add as much as they can there. So the next picture mightn't be so clear, but it, to me, it really shows the strength of the Loop Reflect portfolio. So this, these are previous campaigns, uh, working with people in direct provision. Uh, you know, that, that was a campaign called Reach Out. Um, and then to this year, these two on the right are the individual students' plans. So these two on the left were kind of the results of the campaigns when they had run and they were group campaigns, as you can see. And these two on the right are this year's just in recently uh, where they I asked the students to submit their their plan. So there was a thousand word text, which is above these uh, on these pages. You can't see them, but then to include some artifacts, so photos, screenshots of emails they sent. And I just thought it was lovely that this student uh, on the bottom right uh, included, uh, you know, the certificate she took because she was talking about mental health and access to mental health for for uh, third level students. So again, just showing the, the addition of the visual uh, impact. So. I suppose just thinking about the process myself, um, I think the first time any student group does it, uh, it kind of, it's a little bit daunting, but I just really noticed the second year group I just have now did this with me last year. And so everybody just submitted them, no problem. Uh, I didn't have to follow up with anybody. Uh, so the student just activates their loop reflect account once and then create pages, save them, add them, go in and out of them. Uh, and then on my side, I set up the assignment in loop. I tell loop that the submission is via reflect so not via a document uh, and then the student logs into loop into the submission and then selects their reflect page from their own list submits and if they realize they submitted the wrong thing they can go back in and update that until i close the assignment and i suppose just to reflect on reflect um in my own experience i think the students do learn or maybe display new digital skills if that's important, and I do think it's important, I mean, more, more now than ever, um, it fosters creative assessment. So I'm more likely to have a video or the kind of plans through Reflect. It's less likely to be just text-based. So I do think it's better suited in my experience when there are multimedia components. Um, and I, I think the students can begin to build up their own portfolio of pages into collections within Loop Reflect. Uh, there are technical issues first time round. I think just the 
loop and loop reflect. We know they interact those student logs into one. They're connected to the other, but it can be a little bit confusing. Um, there can be some last minute issues, but I think that they lessen with experience. And in the past, I've had kind of hands on sessions with Lisa Donaldson from the TEU, responsible for ePortfolios and DCU in the computer lab, which worked well. But actually, the online session this year worked just as well, if not better. Everybody was online. We were asking them to do the stuff as we were going. Um, I suppose we did have, you know, follow ups with the students who had problems and I kind of called the session in the, the computer lab before and then online, you know, mandatory in as much as anything can be mandatory. But obviously there are circumstances where we would follow students up. And I suppose just keeping an eye to be cautious about uh, style over content. So I, I suppose hopefully I'm trying to to. Uh, balance that out within the assessments and I give them to them in the beginning, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, to make sure it's clear that there is, there are marks for the creativity, for the inclusion of artifacts. So, you know, unfortunately, some students would maybe just add the text to the to the plan recently and that means they kind of lost out on a lot of those the kind of marks for adding uh, artifacts uh, into the portfolio because that's really what it's really uh, there for and advice for myself I suppose and maybe others if they were interested to hold those practical classes and they're fine online at the moment take those steps early so I always encourage the students to set up their page early develop their content offline. Uh, so go through really step by step by step, you know, there's about four steps involved, you know, decide on your topic, develop your content offline or, you know, in, in save everything offline, then go into your page, upload, upload what you need to um, provide a demonstration, do it myself, show it in the class, bring in the expertise from Lisa and others. Um, and, you know, there's so many open sessions. Uh, so I'd like to improve what I'm doing. I'd like to work within, within the program on a kind of a program level portfolio. <coughs> and what I mean by that is, you know, I've I complete a lot of references for students on this program. There's a lot of diversity of interest on the program and students are applying for occupational therapy, physiotherapy, um, could be for a master's in human resource management after this. Um, and I just usually have to ask them to remind me, you know, what was your uh, video on what was your campaign on your research projects your health action project in the third year so i do believe that if more of the the more modules if if within more modules we were using them that the students would have a program level page or a collection that they could then share with us me or the person maybe interviewing them for a job or a postgraduate course <coughs> excuse me uh, so that, you know, they wouldn't need all the, the kind of paper versions of case studies and things that they would be visually uh, available. So that's me. Our groups end up in this happy moment uh, with some experience of Loop Reflect under their belt. So thank you. I hope that wasn't too fast or too slow. Thanks, Anne. Thanks. That was great. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's oh, sorry. perfect. I'm going to over straight away to um, Melissa. Melissa is going to share with us um, the undergraduate experience in using ePortfolio. Thanks, Melissa. So where do I start, I guess? Um, so I'm, I'm five years using portfolios in practice and uh, in terms of my teaching. And the medium in which I use them in is uh, Anne showed a great deal of creativity in her uh, samples of, of portfolio uh, with ePortfolio. So I kind of use them as structured assessment places. And from a nursing point of view, um, the reason why I chose to do it was because of the, it, it feels intuitively right uh, because of a profession. It's, we're supposed to be building a professional portfolio. We're supposed to be having, you know, collecting our learning and having evidence of a continual learning. So the idea that you, you could start in their student days I thought it was very, it was a great idea actually, and I kind of got them used to the whole concept of using a portfolio. So how they're being used, and I'll show you in a few minutes, but in the way I'm using them is more like an, um, a structured assessment like, and like there is a debate, you'll see, you know, why not a Word document? You know, you could use, you could technically do what I'm gonna do in a Word document, but I, I guess what it does is it, 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 the, the longevity of a portfolio the potential for creativity is certainly there. So I guess that's what made me kind of 
move to um, move to um, using a portfolio based assignment. So there's three modules that I use them in, and um, one I use them for four years, five years on the second year module. So I'm going to show you that one. I'll share the screen and um, show you my modules. So in second year, um, you can see this one here, for example. So if you notice, and this is another thing, a new language comes to play in the top of the portfolio. So mine is a collection, which is more than one page. Some portfolios are single pages. This is three pages, as you'll see on the top right. So obviously it was about, this is, so this is what I put there. And what the students have to do is they have to fill in the boxes. Do you know, so everybody has a consistency. There's the scope for creativity, but it's usually in relation to the content and the text. There is, you know, so, you know, so attendance it was a kind of a critical discussion about attendance and they would write here and then they have to fill in a case description of, um, so I, I give them, they have to fill in all of these things in relation to a particular case. The module is about assessment of a clinical case. So obviously all of this stuff becomes relevant when it's, fit, when it's populated and then at the end they have to apply their learning on the module to the case. Of the case above that they presented. So, it, but anyway, that's what they do. So that's page one, and so they they, they so there's a potential they're doing different things, and um, in terms of their learning, they're populating things, they're applying their learning. On the second page here, what we try and getting them to do, they're given terminology and they create a we create a dictionary within the module. So in second year, they're not familiar with a lot of medical terms. So I give them three terms, everybody gets three terms, and then they merge them all, they populate them into the portfolio, and then we also generate a dictionary, so they'll actually have a dictionary at the end of this module. So there's kind of potential there for, you know, just a bit of creativity. And then also I embrace the idea of looking up, a lot of nurses are looking up information online, so we're trying to what, post a recommendation of a good online nursing resource, and they do that also on loop itself. So there's a group, see what the group are doing, but also it gets replicated in here as a means of yeah, making me visible as to their contribution to that discussion forum about uh, an online nursing resource and also a book because they tend not to go to, the books are, it encourage them to get into the books. So that's page two and page three is usually the reference list. Oh, no, not in this one. Um, in this one, there was a medication exercise. So they were sent to websites to look at things, uh, write down their learning, you know, the, you know, what did they learn from it, how long it took, and then some case studies about somebody with, you know, clinical conditions and what would you do with this, you know, they, so it forces them to kind of look up medications and report back. So they're the, um, they're the um, things that I would have done on this module. And so I'm um, just going to stop there. I wonder, can I change the, if I go to another module, for example, and um, I'm just going to stop the share for a second. Um, for, a sec, for a second, I have to go back now. And, um, sorry, no. okay, back in and back in now to, um, I can to do reflect. So the other module that I use it with is, um, this is another example of a nursing portfolio, is, um, a fourth year module. So in this module, they're trying to get ready for practice. And um, so it's where they go on a replacement. So they can be going to Hamley Hospital, Bowman Hospital. So what I'm getting them to do on page one, there's four pages in this collection, is they have to, you know, do preparatory work and then they post evidence of that and um, look at medications for nurses and midwives, etc. And look at this. so they have to you have to have um, evidence of completion of these courses. I, I think truthfully, I think this one will work better if I show you. Sorry, show you an example of this one. So we just I can show you. They see the way I'm just going to fly through the student's name. So they post the actual um, evidence of the documentation that they've completed something there. And then, for example, consider conditions relevant to your placement. And uh, so they do that and information sources. So. Um, and then just information, other information about learning on the module. And then the final part is, is just a clinical case study. And then page four is references. So I also have a third year one uh, that I do, but I'm conscious that time is flying. But it's just a snapshot to show you the kind of potential that you can use in the module. And similar to it, and I do use a rubric and, and, and spoke about the content and um, 
just in relation to the content, I want to share this slide. So, on, you know, a lot of the marks in portfolios tend to be about creativity, as it can be about creativity. But this one, I have that in purpose to try and block the student's name. But you can see that there's, you know, in, about clarity of content, you can create rubrics as well to mark. Uh, so the Rube Reflect portfolio is marked with a, um, is marked with the, the uh, sorry, the portfolio is created using the Rube. So I guess that's, they're just things that are done, that's the potential of um, the portfolio. Now, the, the, that's the, so the good things, I guess, of, in relation to this experience, the good things is it, it gets students into the mind of using a portfolio. Uh, there's a lot of potential for creativity. I use it to, they have limited creativity on my module, um, but I do know that there's huge potential, uh, particularly for clinical assessment documentation, and I think there's huge potential for a program level and uh, portfolio for students. That's me personally. Um, I, they like they, they like this, it's easy to submit for them, which is great, but also the challenges, and again, I already talk, talked to that. There are challenges with it too, and um, obviously the way I'm using it, there's um, a couple of setbacks. First of all, becoming familiar with the lingo, knowing how to copy the collection, to paste it somewhere. There's a few steps that aren't necessarily intuitive. For the students, sometimes they struggle with um, editing and they don't press save. There's a, a separate box pops up when they have to populate. And they do eventually get familiar with it, but it's, it, 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 it'd be nice if it was smoother. And then ensuring all students are enrolled and um, only for the involvement of the TEU and Lisa Donaldson in particular, we need somebody because the expertise is not, I, I don't have, I have a, a limited level of expertise with this system, but it's, it's limited, you know, and it definitely wouldn't work as well if we didn't have the involvement of the TEU. So we're very grateful for Lisa and colleagues for that. Um, let me see, I'm trying to think of anything else. Not really, I think uh, similar to Anne, I'd like to improve on my own technical expertise, just like um, like the, um, what's the word I'm trying to do? So I would see we would like this potentially like Word or Excel or PowerPoint, that it's a, it's a system that we can just learn a little bit more about to become more confident to use it. I would consider myself not as familiar because once I set up the assignment, then I don't tend to use it myself because I'm just using it to grade students. So. Um, that was, that's really just, I'd like to get more uh, au fait with it myself. Um, and that's it really. So I can see great program level potential scope. So I know it's a little bit, I'm a little bit um, less prepared and it's a bit more on the fly in my presentation, but I hope um, I hope it's been useful for you to give you, a, you know, an insight as to what, the, what, what we do on the module and how, we can, how it's used in practice. So thank you for your time. And I have one minute to spare. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Melissa, for this. This was great. Thanks for both of your presentations. I think it really starts to show already, you know, how an e-portfolio can be used in so many different ways. You know, so we have, you know, different kind of ideas of how it can be used and it's, and it's used for students in different ways kind of for, for the different programs. So I think it's really good to see, you know, that actually, you know, how it's been used. Like I, I personally had very little idea. Um, so and I, I'm going to share now, I guess, the um, experience that we have from the Mathis program as well, which is slightly different again. So really, it's really exciting to see um, how we all um, do different things uh, within our modules and potentially our programs, I suppose. Um, so um, if it's OK, I might just... Uh, please stop me also for time because I'm probably just as everyone else probably talking way too much. <laughs> so um, what I want to share with you here, sorry, uh, today, I'm just going to, I guess, from, from uh, my point of view, I just want to give a quick introduction to what we're doing kind of uh, in the Mathis program and particularly uh, within the module that uh, has just run now over the last semester, which is uh, NS5012, and that's it's Advancing Practice Leadership and Collaboration, is a core module on the master's program that uh, I'm chairing. 
And uh, within the masses program, it's just, I guess that's one similarity that we all seem to have, I think, that I'm picking up. Um, it's not a program level e-portfolio. It's uh, there's a portfolio attached to some of the modules. So for students, I suppose perhaps it's um, maybe a little bit messy in a sense that there's very little consistency. And also for us as, as lecturers, there's little consistency in, in, in uh, maybe uh, using it overall and also in how it's been used, I suppose. Um, so let me just share uh, with you here, I wanted to give you a quick, um, just very brief overview before um, Jennifer will give you the student experience. Basically, I'm really talking about NS5012, Advancing Practice Leadership and Collaboration, which is where I have been using the um, e-portfolio in the program. And just to show you what the students have to do here is um, that um, the student really uses a portfolio as part of a, a set of assignment, a, a sort of, a part of a set of assessments. So there's there are different components to the assessment within the module, and the fifty percent there, the A kind of part, is the portfolio um, part where students uh, write a reflective account on their leadership practice and collaboration with patients, clients, teams uh, prior to COVID nineteen, and uh, the changes in the area of practice. Uh, and within their own leadership activities as the pandemic hit, and then their plans and their visions for practice development and service improvement. And some of the students had already been involved in that quite heavily in their, in their area. So basically, we changed our um, assignment a little bit uh, in this master's program because we had certainly a problem with accessing practice supervisors. So the aim here was really to develop a portfolio that students could guide themselves um, with the help of the module coordinator. So, and we, I guess, because the, the, the semester um, was really set in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, I suppose we used this um, to just take a moment, uh, I suppose, to just reflect on what's actually happening here and how does it affect our leadership and our practice innovation and our, our collaboration in practice. Um, so the students are all practitioners within this program. So they were in a brilliant position to, um, you know, show in their portfolio, um, you know, one initiative where they had taken some leadership to maybe make things in terms of, you know, collaborating with their practice or with their staff or with their with their clients, uh, you know, more effectively during the COVID nineteen pandemic. And there were brilliant examples uh, coming out from that. And uh, Jennifer is uh, one of the students who's been on the pro on the program. Um, so just to um, explain, um, and I'll show the I'll show the example of the portfolio in a minute. Um, so the students had to um, work on their portfolio, and as part of their portfolio, we started off with um, uh, kind of making a quick video pitch, actually, and um, that they all posted, and all uh, there was peer assessment going on for that part, um, where the students just pitched their idea for the portfolio, you know, what they were actually involved in and what they wanted to reflect on, and that was really useful, I think, it was very useful for me as a module coordinator, and hopefully very useful to the students, um, and as part of that video, um, I also got students to fill out the Digicom um, education uh, survey. It's like a self-assessment tool, a European survey kind of thing where you can self-assess your own uh, technical digital kind of skills. And I, I was doing that, I suppose, to just give everybody that kind of self-assessment because that was a big thing within the uh, module I, I felt and I had from past the experience that the technical side of things, the digital side of things is actually the most scary bit uh, for everybody involved. <laughs> so, so I thought that was kind of a good thing to kind of start off with, even to kind of, um, I guess, set the idea that you don't have to be perfect you know, in the digital kind of skills. Like we had several different um, clinics and classes and a lot of support from Lisa Donaldson from TU, who has been mentioned many times already. And it's been great to have the support from TU to kind of you know just have um, that ongoing support uh, for the students there if there were any questions and so on. And um, so the portfolio had three parts um, and I can just uh, maybe show it uh, here if I just stop sharing there for a moment. So very briefly just want to show you um, here, sorry, this is basically just quickly the loop page and from there we're getting into the portfolio. This portfolio uh, was a three-pager, so again kind of a um, 
Sorry, just clicking here. Hope this is going to work. Yes, <laughs> there we go. So it's a three page. It has like we called it cycle one, cycle two and cycle three. And then the first cycle, basically, the student was giving an overview of the module, the learning outcomes, their own learning outcomes that they created for this, this module, what they wanted to achieve in terms of collaboration and leadership within this module and uh, give a brief overview of what normally their role would involve, how they would normally collaborate and lead in practice, and what changed when the pandemic actually hit. What was going on there and what was the main kind of feature that they wanted to take out for the portfolio. And that was really the first part in the um, portfolio. And then in the second uh, page is uh, the center of this was really a reflective piece. So where the student actually could completely reflect uh, on um, the uh, like on initi on an initiative, like one initiative, so like a collaboration or practice development initiative that they felt really made a difference or will make a difference depending on what stages they were at because during the pandemic things were pretty unpredictable as we all know, <laughs> and then or a collaboration or practice development in initiative that went unexpectedly well or really well or, or one that was particularly demanding. So they could choose from that and reflect uh, on that in cycle two. And then in cycle three, you see, I'm just trying to find the button. <laughs> uh, on, in cycle three, um, the student um, was basically bringing it all back together by uh, from the reflection or from the initial first kind of cycle to um, reflect either on their plan or outline the plan of you know future uh, improvement or service enhancements and that they have come up with and again same as uh, we were saying before there was a lot of space there for including artifacts and um, it was kind of it was kind of um not really mandatory for this, you know, people, some people would have kind of focused more on text and then others would have included more artifacts. So it was, it was kind of open. It wasn't a, an obligation as such. It would be, it's, it's a nice supporting piece of evidence. That's how we were looking at it from, from our perspective. So um, the student really brought everything together here. And also at the end, they had a self-assessment sheet. So they had the marking grid from the module and they could self-assess on the marking grid before they were handing it in, submitting it on, submitting it on loop, just as was outlined before, and then um, it was all taken into consideration for the assessment later on. But that's just very briefly, brief overview of what we did for the module. I'm handing over to Jennifer to um, just maybe tell us a little bit about how it was for her as a student doing this module. Okay, thanks, Daniela. You've covered most of what I was going to say, but um, so. Oh God, sorry. <laughs> Um, so as part of that module, we did a lot of virtual classes and online learning and we communicated through a WhatsApp group um, through email and there was class reps organized. So there was lots of support from the very beginning. Um, I suppose all of our practice had been challenged by COVID and it was difficult to stop and reflect as we were bombarded with new policies, guidelines, legislation and practices. So it was quite a difficult time to start thinking about undertaking an e-portfolio if you hadn't been used to doing it, but um, it, it was a very enjoyable experience. Um, sharing the information was a great challenge. Um, felt like you were firefighting in work all of the time. So it gave you a, um, a great bit of time to stop and reflect. Um, which kind of, I suppose, firefighting all the time um, would have an quite an impact on your psychological, physical well-being. And um, you'd kind of feel like you were losing um, sight of skills that you might have already had and um, developed through practice over time. And um, so this module, I suppose, really enabled you to benefit from a prescribed time to sit and reflect and um, focusing on your current practice, how it had changed um, and how to embrace that change. And um, it was designed very well, as Daniela had said, in the three cycles. It was pre-populated and um, so there was easy to follow way of moving through the reflection and um, what else was I going to discuss and um, to enhance your personal and professional knowledge by using the portfolio was was good as well and um, it allowed me to identify my own leadership style um, and portray the use of your skills through collaboration which was really important concept at the time um, you know building new relationships with other disciplines and sharing evidence um, and best practices with each other. It was a really good way to learn from each other um, despite the pandemic. 
um, use of stories, um, interviews, files. There was lots of space for everything to go up. We were actually querying would it be enough, but there was loads of space to share um, areas of your practice with others. Um, you could choose your own reflective framework to demonstrate your learning within your own environment. And it was a really enjoyable module. It was really interactive. Um, and I would really value and hope to use again within my career. Um, I suppose, you know, for your personal, for your professional registration, you would have had to fulfill this requirement. So it was a good time to start doing that and um, just to have collection of evidence if you were asked to present it. Um, any challenges I found would have been um, links to find support was the to really identify your own digital competency first. Um, know exactly what you're able to do, what you're not able to do. That was really important because completely different levels from what I would have been used to. Uh, there was lots of drop-in clinics. They were excellent. Uh, Lisa Donaldson had provided a lot of them. And um, there was a help tab. The, uh, the actual DCU website was an excellent resource as well, um, which we learned as we went along. Um, you could click into that and it had examples of everything that you wanted to know. Um, we had support from the module leaders um, and excellent IT support from Lisa. Um, there was, as Danielle explained, there was the three cycles. So it was really pre-designed and we had to fill in the blanks and it was really allowed you to be creative. You could be as decorative as you like. And um, there was lots of sp um, space and blocks or you could delete some of the blocks if you were just used to typing and putting up PDF articles. Um, that was it really. Um, lots of sections on how do I do this on the DCU website, which was really helpful late at night at the weekends. Um, so I, overall, I found a really joy, enjoyable experience. Um, and that was it. Um, I think Anne mentioned a good point about style over content earlier. Um, that was important because while you're focusing on designing and putting the flowery backgrounds, you know, to get the balance right, really, to have the quality of documentation there as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you there, Jennifer. Totally. It's really the balance in the portfolio, isn't it? When you're writing an academic piece, it's kind of you're focusing on that kind of, you know, content piece. And then when you do portfolios, it's more kind of the creative side as well. So it's really um, it's, it, you're doing more than you would um, do it just if you just focus on one style. But to get the balance right is, yeah, it's just one of these things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.